So first of all, let's start with Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. For me, they are my top picks in Africa. The key reason being, they are the ultimate intra-regional traders. If you look at Cote d'Ivoire, it is perhaps the most diverse commodity producer in West Africa. It's the world's largest producer of cocoa. It's the largest grinder of cocoa. It's also the largest producer of cashew nuts. It's the largest exporter of natural rubber, palm oil. It has numerous connections to other countries in the region. And then if you look at Kenya as well, the largest exporter in the world of horticultural goods. I mean, they sell Kenyan cut flowers at Liverpool Street Station every single night. Um, the leading exporter of tea in Africa and of coffee as well. And all, also, both of these countries act as major inter-regional hubs. If you look at the trade that flows through Cote d'Ivoire to all the other countries of the CFA Frank Zone, if you look at Kenya, it is a conduit for enormous trade flows going into Central and Eastern Africa, many of them informal as well. In the case of Cote d'Ivoire, growth is really picking up now. We have a very strong government, which is giving a very clear message to international investors. And that looks very, very positive. In the case of Kenya, I would say it is performing beyond expectations. Anyone who has done business in Kenya knows there are great challenges in the country. There is a security challenge. There's also, to be honest, a huge problem with corruption there, and official corruption they're trying to address. But both countries are overperforming. Both of them have such enormous potential. If you're making a bet on Cote d'Ivoire and Kenya, it's not just a single bet on one commodity or on one sector. You're betting on the entire array of economic possibilities. So for me, they're the top two. Now the next one to consider, number three, is Ghana, what I would call the wayward child. I remember five years ago, the first time I went to Ghana, um, I got there, everyone had been talking about Ghana as this amazing investment destination, and I remember a lot of the businessmen were like, hmm, I'm not too sure. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, I don't know, something's not right here. Well, sure enough, the country did come off the rails. Essentially, uh, they thought they were gonna get oil, they thought they were gonna get oil money, they tried to spend it. They took their eye off the ball in many, many different issues. They ended up with a massive fiscal deficit, a chaotic currency, and finally the IMF was called in. But the fact is, since the IMF has come in, and since the new government has really tried to make changes, we've seen real improvements there. If you look at the graph on the left, yes, real G D GDP growth boomed during that oil moment when they were investing in oil production and collapsed, but is coming back. Inflation, which was totally out of control, is nosediving now. And look at the fiscal deficit on the right there, greatly improving thanks to the involvement of the IMF.